uh, hit his starring role in Star Trek, which made him an international celebrity. More recently, he starred in the national tour of the Broadway stage hit Dep Death Trap, as well as several new feature films. And I want to have him bring us up to date. It's my pleasure to welcome him to Over Easy at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, William Shatner. <laughs> The last time we chatted for television was in the, uh, in the uh, museum. It was the Space. Yeah, that was wild. Washington. Yeah. Was we were talking there about the motion picture of Star Trek. And since then, which you did ten years after the television Star Trek. Yes, uh, I'm sure it's very common knowledge that the series was done in 69, 68, 69, 70, syndicated for ten years. And it just kept going like yeah, that. It kept growing. following us. Yeah. And the motion picture was kind of demanded. And there was, as always, a danger of, you've done a lot of different types of roles as an actor, but there's always a danger of getting typecast into something, which you have escaped some way, but how did you, how did you do that? And how did you feel about doing Star Trek again, you know, for a motion picture three years after the film? Oh, of course, uh, it's all past us, and I'll gloss over it very quickly. I've been an actor since I was six, I think, uh, professional since I graduated from the university. So many, many years of acting and a variety of roles and various things. And, and so when Star Trek came along well into my career, it wasn't something new. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I wasn't an overnight success. And when it was done, I spent 10 years continuing my career in a variety of uh, things, uh, some extraordinary uh, and some just mundane. Uh, when the film was, uh, became a reality and was offered to me, I had to think very long and very hard about it renewing this acquaintanceship with Captain Kirk and, and knowing that it, people would say, oh, there's Captain Kirk, uh, in addition to saying there's William Shatner, or, or instead of. But I couldn't, I had not really no choice, and I, so I decided to do the movie. And the movie was fairly successful. It's now past history. And I think Star Trek is now behind me. I believe it to be so. Probably, yeah, uh, but a lot of the other things you... What have you been doing now since uh, well, uh, the death trap? Right? Uh, as we're taping, uh, well before it's being aired, I've just spent... Uh, I made a movie for television. I did a tour of a play. I've made another movie, theatrical movie. And I've got a... They call it The Fright which will be out next year sometime, and a theatrical movie that's in the release right now called The Kidnapping of the President, uh, in addition to considering a number of other projects, in it, uh, which include Richard III for a Shakespeare Festival in California. Yeah. Well, you know, in the uh, California uh, Shakespeare Festival, I am considering doing that as we talk now. Uh, when it's aired, I'll know what I've done. I was going to say, and you've done Shakespeare. Oh, that's where I came from. Okay. And and Stratford, uh, Ontario is where I really started my career. Is that, I don't want to harp on the acting thing, but is that a really good background? If a person is master Shakespeare, does that make other types of acting all seem a little easier? Or well, I, it's a, that's an interesting question. Uh, Shakespeare having so much to do with the technical aspect, breathing, stance, even things like uh, fencing and, uh, and uh, voice production, there's a great deal to do with the technical aspect of acting as well as the emotional aspect. I and mean, we know actors who are either totally technical or either totally emotional, but it is the synthesis of the, of the two that makes the best actor, I think. Uh, and you've got to have both of those to do Shakespeare. You've got to have both to do Shakespeare as well as many other things. But there are many fine actors who play only themselves, who have had no training whatsoever but have a sense of a reality about how they would feel in this situation, and they're wonderful actors, but they're not the technically adept actors that you need for Shakespeare, and many of them know that, and some who don't, and who attempt uh, classical uh, theater, uh, fall short because of it. You're not, well, there's nothing to say you're a typical actor, but you are less introspective and less self-revealing than most of the people in the business. I think it's kind of a corny thing to do, but I think it'd be interesting to people who say, who know you only in the roles that you have played, how you would assess yourself as a human being, as William wow. Shakespeare, as a good, good person. What kind of things move you? What kind of things are you interested in? Well, I'm, I'm a family man, uh, and I am a very private person, and I don't do what we're doing now very often because of that. Uh, growth, children, even the growth beyond children into the aging process, which could mean from the 20s to, uh, to old age. That moves me. Uh, 
the world around me, what I'm breathing and eating, and its uh, declining quality moves me. Uh, life and death and the things that affect that, the very large general generality that I'm speaking of, moves me. Love moves me. The outdoors moves me. Animals, horses, dogs. Uh, movement. You're a concerned individual then, as a, as a human being. I am totally concerned, and as we all are, about what happen what's happening to us, yes. internally and externally, and those things that affect us, I am question what I can do about affecting it so that I can, I can, um, Adjust it. Okay, now that leads you there, there are a number of ways. People uh, become activists or they get into politics or they feel a, a sense of responsibility uh, for the world around them, other people's lives as well as their own. To what extent do you think there's a responsibility weighing on somebody in, in our business, that is the business of communicating and, and, um, and, and entertaining? Uh, what is the responsibility of an actor, for example, in the roles he accepts or in the outlook he exudes? to the people around I, I would love to be in a position that I read, for example, that Robert Redford or Jane Fonda are in, where they say, no, I won't do that project because it doesn't mean, it isn't meaningful to me. But most of us professional actors who make a living, and in some instances in mine, a very good living, we're required to do the job. And sometimes the job isn't, doesn't reflect what we necessarily would think. I mean, uh, I want to play uh, bad guys, for example. And I think it's important uh, for me to play bad guys like Richard as well as a hero, as well as a hero uh, because it's, it gives a vitality to the career, but doesn't mean I'm a bad guy. Uh, there are things that are offered to me that pay a lot of money that almost require me to take it because the money is so large which gives me an opportunity to turn down something less. Now, that's okay, Bill, but I think I know you, and it, it's okay for you to play a bad guy and do a good job playing a bad guy. But I can't imagine that you would, if, say, there was a new television thing that came up that, that uh, uh, promoted some racial supremacy of one race over another or, or was uh, a, what you felt was a giant step backward environmentally. I know I would see you as turning around. Right, but I could see myself playing a racist in a good uh, you mean where the, where the, uh, where the guy the racist? Redeeming? Well, he, yeah. if the racist is a bad guy... Yeah, clearly he's a bad guy. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, certainly uh, I can't uh, think in this day and age in America that there would be a show on national television at any rate that, that would have a... That would have bad a bad right. But I, uh, most of us uh, in this business are not in the position to pick and choose those things that we would love to promulgate in private life. Yeah. Uh, the handful that are, like Bob Redford, are in a very enviable position. Yeah. But we're professionals, and, and uh, there are people you must interview that you wouldn't like to be seen in the same chair with, uh, but you have to do because you're a journalist. Yeah. I, I suppose I worry only sometimes that some television that I see now, I, I have to be critical of, because I think it promotes to a certain extent the idea that violence can be a solution to to a social problem, you know, they beat on the head of the bad guys. Uh, like in the cartoon. Or, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, there, yeah. Is, there is more violence. There's a little more sensation with any sex and so forth. Probably because it's commercial. commercial. But uh, by and large, I'm not knocking the industry, but I think we, we, we can clean up our act. Oh, without question, television is the moving force in this country today. Kids watch it for whatever, you know, eight, nine hours, whatever it is a day. I mean, it's, it's extraordinary, the statistics of what television is doing to us. And in some instances, in the most sublime instances, it moves us for the good Holocaust, uh, reminding West Germany that there was a reward uh, 30 years ago. I mean, that's extraordinary yeah. to you and I, but that's the benefit of things like Holocaust or Roots or whatever. Sure. The opposite, unfortunately, is more true, that uh, it, we reflect a declining quality in life. We could talk for hours on 81 subjects, and it'd be worthwhile. The time goes so fast, I just got to thank you for being on the program today, Bill. Thank you for having We'll be watching you in, in many media and many things. William Shatner, ladies and gentlemen.